Okay, today's lesson, Unit 1, Lesson 5, is about transforming domain and range. Um, I think you'll find this easy considering what we've been doing. So, it will be short and sweet. So, all right, so first off, we have a, a graph here. It is a function, one, because they give it to you in function notation, f of x, but more importantly, because it passes the vertical line test. Okay, I can draw... I can never draw a vertical line and touch it more than once. So that means that I know it is a, a function. Okay, and for each of these, we're going to talk about the domain and range, and they give it to you in this more somewhat set builder notation. We're going to use our interval notation that we have been using. So our domain, um, according to what they told us, is from negative 3 to 3. Now, how do you see that is you're looking at this point on the graph, which is farthest to the left and the x value is negative 3, and I look at this point, which is farthest to the right, and that x value is 3. So then my range, I'm looking for the lowest point on my graph, which is right here, and that is 0, and the highest point on my graph, either one of these, is at 3. So that is my domain and range. All right, so what you're going to do, you, you, you can't check these on a calculator, y'all, because it is all according to that graph. All right, so when you're looking at the graph, you look at any kind of um, key points, and when I mention key points, it's basically when the graph is changing a direction of any sort. So when I look at this one, my key points are going to be here, here, and here. So that when I come down to number one, which is the example I'm going to do for you right now, um, we have talked about this. This two is inside the parentheses and when it's inside it affects the x and it does the opposite of what it looks like so minus two you think it's going to go to the left but it's actually going to go to the right so that means that i'm adding i'm actually adding two to each x value okay so i'm going to go to my key points which was negative three three and i'm going to move it to the right two units and I'm going to that point in my original graph of 0, 0, and I'm going to move it to the right, 2 units. Boom. And then my point that is 3, 3 moves to the right, 2 units. And then from there, you know the shape of it. So from here, I'm going to go boom, boom. And there we have it. Okay. So that's one example. Here is another example. Okay. It says y equals f of x minus 1. All right, this 1 is, I'm not in my pen, that worked out okay. This 1 is outside the parentheses. Outside affects the y, and we do the same thing. So minus 1 means I'm going to go down 1 unit, and I'm going to subtract 1 from each y value. So if you remember, we had the point negative 3, 3, so I'm going to go down 1. 0, 0 becomes 0, negative 1. And 3, 3 becomes 3, 2. So I hope you can see from that that we have shifted that graph down 1 unit. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? Because nobody's here telling me. I forgot to give the domain and range of each one, okay? So let's go back and do that. I know I was wondering why it's going so fast. Domain. Okay, everything in this domain, y'all, if you, let's see, come on. All right, <clears throat> we added 2 to each value. So instead of going from negative 3 to 3, you can see from the graph that we're going from negative 1 to 5. Well, that was weird. Negative 1 to 5, and that adds 2 to each of those values that we had. The range did not change. I did not do anything to the y value, so it's still 0 to 3. Okay. Now I'm going to come down and look at that next one I did. This time, my y value is changing, so I'm actually going to go put in that same negative 3 to 3. didn't change because I didn't do anything to the x, but I did do something to the y's, and that is I subtracted 1 from each y value. So instead of going, uh, the lowest point was 0, and it's now negative 1, and the highest point was 3, and now it's 2. Okay. One more of that type of graph, okay, because we didn't do very much of this yesterday. But again, anytime you have a number that's in there with your f of x, 
you decide whether or not that number is inside or outside. Hope you can see that's inside the parentheses. Inside affects the X, and we're going to do the opposite. And so instead of, that's multiplying, so instead of multiplying by 2, I'm going to divide each X value by 2. So when I normally started at negative 3, 3, I'm going to go negative 3 divided by 2 is 1 and a half. My Y value doesn't change. Then I go to 0. 0 divided by 2, still 0. And then it went to 3, 3, and 3 divided by 2, this 3 divided by 2 is 1.5. So this is what happens. And this is why when we, uh, let me graph that for you. This is why when we, oh, boo, go away. Let's do it this way. Nope. <laughs> it went away. Let's go like that. There we go. All right. So I'm hoping you can see, remember we talked about before that when it's the opposite, okay, when the 2 was on the outside, um, as you've done earlier, if the 2 is on the outside, it's a vertical stretch. And we, told, we said that 1 was the number. If the number was larger than 1 on the vertical, then the larger than 1 is a stretch, smaller than 1 is a compression. So it's the opposite way with X, all right? Larger than one is going to be a compression. So I hope you can see that we shrunk this, we, we pushed this thing together, made it closer, okay? So that's what the compression looks like. All right, the rest of those you should be able to handle. The only other thing that I want to tell you about is this time you're doing the exact same thing with the graph that we had before, but they're not giving you the picture. Oh, I forgot my pen. All right. So the domain is from negative 3 to 3, and the range is from 0 to 3. We know that from the graph, but they also gave it to it right here. But I want, I want all your answers in um, interval notation. So when you look at this, is this inside or outside? It's inside, so it affects the x and does the opposite of what we, look, what we um, know. So I know it's going to move to the right which means I'm going to add 10 to each x value. So what is my domain? I'm going to add 10 to negative 3 and get 7, and I'm going to add 10 to 3 and get 13. Did I do anything to the y values? No, so my range is not going to change. And that is all that's to it for transforming domain and range. If you have any questions, please come see me or email me. Thank you.